Welcome back to Developers Home and today we are discussing about Spark ETL with SQL databases. In earlier video and blog we have discussed about Spark ETL with files and in that we understood how to do Spark ETL with files in CSV format, JSON, text, Parquet, ORC or Evro format. So now today we are gonna do same thing but with SQL databases and here we are considering MySQL and Postgres SQL. So now before starting this what we cannot do is we'll understand that what all kind of different operations we do today so first we install spark libraries after that we create connection with sql databases in our case mysql and postgres sql we'll read data from mysql table views and also same way post sql tables and views we do transform data and then again write data into those SQL databases using Spark. So before starting that, what you can do is you can go to this Spark ETL GitHub repo and from there you can clone this repo where we have all the solutions for this Spark ETL. We'll also have data which you can use for uh, this use cases. So here we are using spark mysql and postgres sql so you also need to have this setup in your system so if you have followed my earlier blog and video we have done data engineering suite setup in our local system so now if you don't have that just go to earlier videos and do setup data engineering suite in your local system so once you do that setup you you will have this all the docker containers are running from this docker com compose so here we have data engineering suite and in that we have spark instance running mysql running postgres sql running and mongodb is running so for this scenario you know that you will need this kind of setup so once we have this setup available all the instances are running we can start our etl work here we'll be first starting with sql databases and in sql databases to do connection with SQL databases, we require that package to be with us our Spark SQL. So you know that if we go here into Spark instance and in that Spark instance, if you go to terminal and in a terminal, you see that what are the all jar files are available or what are the packages already installed with our Spark instance. So to do that, what we can do is we can go to OPT Spark and jars. I'm already into that folder. So now I will list what all kinds of jars are already available. So with our Spark instance, we have all the jars and packages available with relates to Azure Blob Storage, Azure Data Lake Services, AWS S3 Bucket and GCS connecting to Snowflake, Delta. So these are the packages are already available. But here you see that we don't have any packages available for mysql or postgres sql so our first job is to install and download and install these packages so that you know that we can do this as operations with mysql and postgres sql so that so for that we have maven repository available and i will go to this maven repository where i have these packages available so now if you go on this link so we see here we see that we have different versions are available and i will go to latest version so from here i will get to know that what is a group id artifact id and version id and based on that i can say that i need this package from maven repository so before starting our spark session we'll also pass this configuration so with that starting spark session it will check do we have this mysql packages are available if not it will first download that package and then it will start this spark session so you know that once our session is ready we have this all the required packages available with us so now what i will do is i will quickly start my spark session and at the same time i will say that i also need this package from maven repository you can also check logs here so in my case earlier i executed that so earlier this package was downloaded so it's not showing here is downloaded but it says that okay it's already available so it's considering those artifacts but it's not doing any download so now we have this package available with us and at the end you know that it's a downloading that jar file 
and that uses JDBC connection. So now to connect to MySQL, what we will do is we'll write this code and where we say that we have spark.read and as in a format we are using JDBC, we'll specify that it will use this driver and we need to pass that we want to connect this local MySQL. So if I go to my MySQL instance, so we have here MySQL instance is running and now if I go to MySQL workbench, so here I have one schema data engineering and in that schema I have table with name user. So what I will do is I will read this data from Spark SQL and I want to load this data from MySQL to Spark data frame. So normally you know that I understand that this Spark is also running on my local network. MySQL is also running on my net local network. So I can easily pass localhost. So if I go here, you see that I have stored this as a 127.0.0.1. But here I am doing connection from my local system. But in case of Docker, it will connect to Docker's 127.0.0.1. So instead of passing 127.0.0.1, I need to pass my IP address. And what I can do is I can go to IP config and I can get what is my if in case you are on windows you can pass ip config otherwise you need to pass if config and here i can be getting that this is my ip address so here i have different configurations for network and i am getting ip address which is required in my use case and which is uh, here 192.168.1.104 so now I will specify 192.168.1.104 and this port and I want to connect data engineering as a database and my database table is user. So now it will connect to my uh, database. It will load data from MySQL into my data frame. And once data is available, what we can do is we can use print schema so that I can print what is the schema of that table. Same way I will print that data. So I will get to know that, okay, this is the data which is there in MySQL, I am also having that data here. So this is how we read that data from MySQL. I will create temp high view so that we can do Spark SQL that is also done now. We do transformation and I will say that, okay, I just need uh, users who's having ID more than 40 and I will store that into one data frame. Once that is done, I will do count that how many rows are th there. So at the end in this new data frame, I am having 10 rows. So now what we will do is I will write this data into MySQL again. So if I go here on MySQL, I can see that uh, here in MySQL, I have in this schema, I have tables with name user. So I will create one more table with name username. And in that table, I want to load this data. So I will write data frame dot write and format JDBC and all other same things and destination table I am giving username so it will create table with name username if table is already there it will just load data if table is not there it will first create table and then load data so once I will execute and this is executed so now if I go to MySQL workbench and if I do refresh here I will be getting one more table which is name username if I go and have data, so it's having 10 users and that's what we are loaded from Spark. So this is how you know that we can do Spark ETL with MySQL. Now we'll be doing same thing with Postgres SQL and for Postgres SQL also, we need to install packages because those packages are not available. Same way we can go to Maven and we can get what is the package we need to use. So here in my case, I am also using same package for Postgres SQL. So once we have, you know, that uh, Postgres packages are available with our Spark session. So we have this Postgres packages available with our Spark session. Next thing is we'll also do same thing. What we can do is we read data from Postgres SQL and on our earlier problem solving session we have created one table into postgres sql and which is employee table if you don't have that table created in your postgres sql you can use csv file to create that postgres sql table so now if i go and have a look on that table 
I can see that I am having this first name, last name, employee salary, employee ID. These are the data available in this table. And I want to load this data into Spark data frame. So now what I can do is I am also again using spark.read, passing that table name that this is the table. So if I execute that now, it is as of now loading this data into this Postgres data frame. Once data is loaded, I will execute a print schema. So we'll see that, okay, this is having, these are the all columns. Just to check, I am just printing this data here. So I will get to know that, okay, we have this all data available here. On a next step, I will create hive temp view so that we have this data available into our temporary SQL and then we can write Spark SQL. So creating this temporary table. Once this table is available, we can write Spark SQL now. And during transformation, what we will do is we create one more data frame and store employees first name and salary whose salary is more than 50,000. So if I execute this one, our new data frame, which is having employees who's having salary more than 50,000. So we have 59 employees who is having that salary and those all data is available into new data frame. And now we want to create this table into Postgres SQL and want to load this data into Postgres SQL. So we again do same thing. We do data frame dot write and all the same thing will pass that. And here we'll pass that I want to load this data into employee one. If table is not available, it will create table and load data. So in our case, there is no table available with employee one. And that's why it will create table and load data. So if I execute this one, this is currently executed. And now this data should be there into our table. So our table will have first name and salary. So if I go here and now do refresh on Postgres SQL, I see one table with employee one. And if I do select operation on that, I see that we have first name and salary. If I execute, I see that we are having 59 rows and all employees are having salary more than 50,000. So this is how we can do Spark ETL with Postgres SQL. You can also, you know, that specify two packages where you know that Postgres SQL and MySQL, you can read data from MySQL and write data into Postgres SQL. On earlier, you know, that session, we understand how to do read and write with uh, files. So you can also read from files, write into SQL, write into Postgres SQL. So this all different kind of ETLs you can do using Spark. So here, you know that in terms of learning, we have learned that how to do read and write on SQL databases, how to create connection, how to load packages for Postgres SQL and MySQL. So yeah, and uh, we'll learn about these all things. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Till then, thanks and see you.